We will now discuss the main characteristics of the EU legal system. The building blocks of the EU legal system are the primary and secondary acts, as well as the general principles of law. Primary acts are between the governments of the EU member states. Uh, they are set out in various treaties that uh, form the basic institutional structure of the EU. Secondary acts are legislative and executive acts that the Council, the Parliament and the Commission agree to. These are based on articles in the treaties. The EU treaty sets out four kinds of secondary acts. Regulations have a general application and are binding on both the EU and the member states. Directives are addressed to any number of member states and are binding in the terms of the results of the, to be achieved. Directives must be transposed into law by national authorities. Decisions are addressed to member states, private citizens or legal entities. They are binding in their entirety. Recommendations are addressed to any uh, member state or citizen, but are not binding. Opinions have the same legal force as recommendations. Note, however, that the distinction between regulations and directives should not be overstated. Many directives are so detailed uh, that they leave uh, the member states with very little scope for maneuvering in the transposition process. Also, the European Court of Ju uh, Justice, the e ECJ, has uh, for a series of rulings made the directive similar to regulations in terms of their ability to confer rights to uh, private citizens. Finally, we have the general principle of law. Primary and secondary legislation is not sufficient for solving all legal issues. The EU treaty instructs the ECJ to ensure that the law is observed. The ECJ has taken this to mean that uh, when interpreting EU primary and secondary acts, it can apply uh, the general legal principles derived from the EU's basic principles uh, and uh, from member state constitutions. There are four main principles. First, administrative and uh, legis uh, legislative uh, legality include legal certainty, uh, proportionality and procedural fairness. Second, economic freedoms include the four economic freedoms of movement of goods, service, capital and labor, as well as the freedom to trade and freedom of competition. Third, the EU has a charter of, a charter of fundamental uh, human rights. And uh, fourth, uh, the EU has political rights that include transparency and subsidiarity. The two central principles of EU law are the direct effect and supremacy. These are classic doctrine in any federal legal system. Direct effect means that individual citizens have right on, uh, rights under EU law that must be up upheld in national courts. In other words, EU law is the law of the land in the member states. Note, however, that the direct ef uh, effect works differently for uh, directives and regulations. Regulation has both vertical and horizontal direct effect. This means that EU citizens can defend their rights against both the state, vertical uh, direct effect, and other individuals or legal entities, horizontal direct effects, in national courts. Now, directives only have a vertical uh, direct effect because they must be transposed into uh, national law by the member states. However, the ECJ has developed the doctrine of state liability. The member states are liable uh, for all infring infringements of EU directives. As a result, EU law is more similar to national law than to international law. In the latter, the subjects are states. If states uh, fail to abide by international law, individuals cannot uh, invoke international convention in national courts, unless the convention has been uh, incorporated into domestic law. In contrast, the subject of domestic and EU law are private citizens. They can invoke their rights in domestic courts. The second central principle is the supremacy of EU law. This means that the EU law is the higher law of the land. Note that uh, there was no supremacy clause in the Treaty of Rome that stated that in case of conflict between national law and EU law, EU law would be supreme. However, the ECJ asserted that asserted the supremacy of EU law once it has established direct effect. 
when establishing the doctrine of supreme supremacy of EU law, the ECJ argued that supremacy was implicit in the transfer of competences for, uh, to the EU level and uh, the direct effect of EU law. The supremacy of EU law means that national legislators cannot adopt a new law that contradicts with existing EU legislation in the field. Through the establishment of direct effect and supremacy of EU law, the European Court of Justice has uh, transformed the EU from an international organization to a quasi-federal system.